Bombing coding interviews is probably one of the worst things that you can experience as a software engineer in this industry. And it sucks, especially when you've spent countless hours applying for jobs and you finally land an interview and it just doesn't pan out. But what I think sucks even more than bombing an interview is being blindsided by the type of interview that you might get. Maybe you've been spending all your free time building side projects and the type of interview that you're expecting is some sort of practical hands-on interview where you're building an application in real time, but you get to the interview and they ask you to, you know, reverse a linked list. Or even worse, you've been nonstop grinding leak code problems and then you're asked to build a project from scratch. Now, I've seen all types of interviews throughout my 10 years in this industry, and I'm someone who casts a pretty large net. I don't have a target company in mind, and as a result, I pretty much apply to any type of company. Small, large, startups, tech companies, non-tech companies. The only thing I personally care about is my job search is if, one, the company seems like it would be engaging and fun to work for, and two, if I'm getting paid what I want to get paid. And as a result, I've been through pretty much every type of technical interview that you could possibly imagine at this point. So in this video, I want to break down the five primary types of technical interviews that I've experienced throughout my career as a software developer. Now, I quickly want to mention my mentorship program, DevLaunch, has been live for two months at this point. And so far, we've helped three students get three offers for roles all over $100,000 a year. And we have multiple students currently interviewing at places like Amazon, Meta, Uber, Capital One, Visa, and more. The mentorship is ran by myself and my two co-founders, Kevin and Tim, who have gotten jobs at places like Amazon, Google, and Microsoft. So if you're looking for mentorship from individuals who have been through countless interviews and have gotten many offers, make sure you click the link in the description to book a free consultation call to see if you'd be a good fit for the program. So let's go ahead and break down the five primary types of interviews that I've seen throughout my career. And we're starting with the tried and true data structures and algorithms leak code style interviews. Now this is the one that people hear about the most and they're typically reserved for the well-established Fortune 500 companies, big tech companies, and then some mid-sized tech companies. Not to say that these are the only types of companies that will run these interviews, but generally speaking, these are the ones that lean heavy into multi-round data structures and algorithm type interviews. Now, admittingly, I'm not an expert at data structures and algorithms. It's just something that I've never had to go very deep on. I've solved a little over 60 leak code problems in total. So I'm not some hardcore grinder, but I do understand some common patterns and I can usually cobble my way through some easier questions. The reality is DSA has never been my personal focus because most of the companies that I've worked at haven't emphasized multi-step DSA heavy type of interviews. However, if your goal is to land an interview at a well-known company, this is what you'll have to study for, usually for months on end, and you'll have to become very good at. Now, the next type of interview that I've seen quite a bit is something to the effect of a paired programming session. And I say paired programming because usually you'll be driving the code implementation and you'll have an interviewer that you can ask questions to, but they won't be helping you too much only if you get really stuck or you need a better understanding of what you're asked to code. Now, this type of interview can take multiple shapes. The first example is something like looking at a piece of code and being asked how you would refactor it. And usually the interviewer here wants you to identify bugs, edge cases, or just bad coding practices like hard coding values, unhandled errors, and then pieces of code that are doing too much or don't have a clear separation of concerns. They essentially want to test your knowledge of good programming practices or even specific language or framework knowledge that is relevant to that job. And I've had this interview many different times for various mobile development and web development based roles. Now, another one of these paired programming types of interviews would be something to the effect of building an application from scratch within a given time frame. So usually you'll be given a feature spec and then you'll be asked to build it. So imagine maybe the feature spec is something like building out an application that fetches weather data for a user's location and then displays that on the screen. Or if it was a more backend focused role, it could be something like building out a small REST API. So in both of these paired programming types of interviews, being familiar with 
basic data structures and good coding practices like knowing how to separate concerns, what makes a pure function, and then common architectural patterns and a solid understanding of object-oriented programming will help you out the most for these types of interviews. Now, another common type of interview that I've seen a few times is the take-home assignment. This is something that can take anywhere from two to four hours, and while it can be a huge time sink, it tends to be the one that a lot of people prefer. And earlier on in my career, when I wasn't as confident in my coding abilities, this was my favorite type of interview because it gave me a lot of time to research and think about how I want to code out an application. Now for these types of interviews, while you're coding out the application, it's best to keep scalability in mind because even though the feature spec might be relatively simple, usually what interviewers are looking for here is how you are properly designing your repository with scalability in mind. Matter of fact, the thing that's most common paired with this kind of interview is a review process where they will review your code, ask you questions about some of your coding decisions, and then why you built out a feature a certain way. And this is why it's super important to think about things like if you had suddenly a hundred different features in this repository. How would you break up the architecture of your code base and how would you handle the flow of data and establish patterns that you could follow to make the code very maintainable in the long term and maybe perhaps support you know five different developers working on it at once. And I would say ultimately companies are trying to gauge how you would build out a real world type of application and if you would be a solid contributor to what they have already built. Now, once you get into more of those senior level rules, you're probably going to encounter some version of a system design interview. Now, these interviews are usually reserved for, again, more mid to senior level roles, and they can take a bunch of different shapes depending on the type of company. For example, at a big tech company, system design might involve building out a massive scalable system. But at a smaller company or a startup, system design might be much more practical. You might be asked, how you would walk through building out a full stack feature from scratch. That could mean things like defining your database schema, your API layer, and then generally what tech stack you would use, how the data would flow through your system, and then how you would deploy it. And then you might start getting into some of those more scalability questions, but they won't be as intense as the big tech system design type of interview. So there's no single right way to do these types of interviews, but what the interviewer is typically looking for here is how you think about architecture, how you break down a large open-ended problem and then how you make various trade-offs. Okay, so now for the fifth and final type of interview. And this is a completely verbal technical interview. Now, full disclosure, this is something that I've only really gotten for junior or entry level uh, roles. And after I climbed to more of a mid-level developer, I never saw these interviews again. But I vividly remember for two junior roles that I applied to early on, I essentially had two interviews that only asked me questions about my experience, the projects that I worked on, uh, the technical challenges for said projects, and things like that. But again, I wouldn't really expect these types of interviews happening too much and probably only expect them for more junior roles at maybe lesser known companies if you do ever get one. Now, I will say if you have a recruiter screen, this is typically what that interview looks like. You're just talking through your experience and the projects that you've worked on. So at some level, it is good to kind of prepare to talk about your experience. So those are the primary types of technical interviews that you might encounter in your job search. Now, I do want to say it is very likely and honestly expected that you will go through multiple rounds of these different types of technical interviews when interviewing for a job. Matter of fact, it is very common that you will likely see a mix. So your first technical interview might be something like a DSA, leak code, easy or medium problem. The next round might be a paired programming or practical implementation type of interview. And then the final round could be something like a high level system design. Or you might just have multi-round data structures and algorithms interviews. You might have multi-round maybe verbal and then practical implementation types of interviews. It honestly really just depends on the type of company. And that might seem very overwhelming and like a lot to prepare for, 
but I actually think there is a relatively straightforward way to sort of cover all your bases and make sure you're preparing for the right interview. And it primarily boils down to a few things. The first one is knowing the type of company that you want to apply to. So if your goal is to work at a well-known tech company, either a big tech or a medium-sized tech company, or maybe a Fortune 500 company, then the chances of you getting multi-step data structures and algorithms, uh, leak code type of questions, is very high. And honestly, it just makes the most sense to really only focus your time on getting really good at these types of interviews. Just understand that these bigger tech companies, these roles tend to be much more competitive and the chances of you applying to one of these roles and getting an interview is much lower compared to a smaller or a non-tech company, especially if you don't have much experience on your resume. The trade-off is you might grind data structures and algorithms, but really struggle to land interviews at these top companies, which is where connections and networking is the thing that will help you out the most for landing interviews at these types of roles. Aside from that, I think the second thing that you can do to help you prepare for your coding interview is know that there is a world outside of big tech. I think a lot of people laser focus on data structures and algorithms in big tech companies. Like these are the only jobs that exist, but I wanna make it extremely clear that there's a whole world out there of just these regular types of software development roles. And also these regular types of software development roles can have pretty amazing compensation packages and benefits, and you can find pretty cool non-name companies to work for and write code for. So if you just wanna become a software developer and you're applying to smaller companies like startups, maybe agencies or non-tech focused companies, then you might not be tested as extensively on data structures and algorithms. Now you still might get coding challenges that fall in the realm of more easier leak code problems like working with strings, arrays, and maps. But most of the time, at least from my experience, a lot of these interviews have rounds that are more of the paired programming, practical implementation, and take home assessment type of interview. Now the way that I prepared for these types of technical interviews have been literally because of the very large software projects that I've worked on at the companies that I've worked at and are built following the patterns that these companies usually test for. These are things like code quality, writing modular code, writing testable code, and then code base architecture. I think the best way that junior developers can prepare for these types of interviews is by building projects, but always keeping scalability in mind. Always build with this idea of scaling your project. Most people throw projects together that solve a bare minimum feature spec and never think about things like, what would this project look like if it suddenly grew to 100,000 lines of code? As you're coding and as you're building, start establishing more scalable patterns in your project. So I think that's the best way you can prepare for these types of interviews by building projects with intention. Now you might fall into this realm of applying anywhere as long as you just get a job. So at some level, I do think it's in your best interest to just prepare for all kinds of interviews, which is why you should not only build projects with intention, but also get good at algorithms. And this is exactly what I would personally do if I was trying to find my first role today. Solve one to two DSA problems a day on lead code and then work on your side project. And I also just think that this can be a great way to help keep things more fun and help you build up a portfolio and create a better resume in the process. Now I know that was a lot of information thrown at you all at once. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions or thoughts, drop them in the comments. And other than that, I will see you all in the next one.